Hey everybody, I am Hubert Porter, your coach and mentor for this lesson in our Nice Creative Flow. Today we're gonna go over the abanico. I tried to get it to you last week. I had a technical difficulty when recording live, I apologize. So I'm gonna do it to you now, so you can have it tomorrow. The abanico, abanico means fan. The way, like ceiling fan, this is a good way to remember it the fans that spin on the ceilings. And the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna keep your arm at a 90 degree angle. You'll see some people that do abanico, they'll do it like this where their arm is straight or like on a, a very long, almost 180 degree bend. But you want, it to keep, you want to keep it at 90. It's a medium range technique. You'll have to be closer when you're applying this technique. Today I'm gonna to do it solo on the bag so you can see how I drill the technique without a partner. And I'm gonna teach you all the forms and what to do and what not to do with abanico as far as your body movement, etc. As I've explained in other videos, I like to be simple, direct, and effective. So when I'm applying a technique, I don't wanna be moving all over the place as much as possible. It's very much kind of like, I guess, Bruce Lee's philosophy about economy of motion. Because why would I wanna move all over the place if I was in a combative situation? I'm just gonna get more tired. So I train to be efficient with less movement, still keeping the art and applying full range of motion with power, speed, and accuracy as much as possible. So let's get into the technique. So I wanna get low. You always wanna get low in your stance. You never wanna be up high because if you're, again, using this in the combative way and you're being charged at while applying technique, you would fall backwards. You'd eventually stumble and lose your balance. So like in any martial art, when you're bracing yourself in combat, you wanna get into a stance where it's giving you stability front and back and side to side. In Filipino martial arts, we kind of go into a boxing stance where our feet are heel to toe and they're just slightly wider than shoulder width and then not too narrow either so that we're walking on a tightrope. We want to get it wide. For the abanico, as I was saying earlier, we want our arm in a 90 degree angle bend. We want our stick just above our head. We don't want it up here and we don't want it down here because when we do abanico, we'll get hit. We want it at a 90 degree angle bend just above our head. So when I apply my abanico, you want to keep it at a 90 degree angle. So when you're hitting from side to side, it stays parallel to the floor. But what happens is, when you're just learning it, sometimes your body starts to move like this. And sometimes your stick starts to get weird on an angle because you don't have that control or development. But the body movement, you'll see also some people demonstrate abanico like this. They'll move like this. Or they'll pivot. And to me, that is a waste of motion because by moving my body this way to move my stick doesn't make sense. And, it, and maybe somebody can demonstrate that for me to make it make sense, but right now it doesn't. Because I don't need to move my body, tell my brain to move my forearm, to move my wrist, and to move my hand. I don't need to move my whole body to create that motion. I don't need to do this. Or pivot. As you can see, I'm almost doing the same thing, but with way more movement. So I can still do this, without moving my whole entire body, which makes it more efficient and simple and direct. So if I'm applying this technique, abanico, you might think, well, if, he's not, if you're not moving your body, there's no power. But the power comes from the heel, through the hip, and it, it's so slight you're rotating that you have the power generating through your hips, into your shoulder and through your wrist. Very much like Bruce Lee's one inch punch he generated it up from through the ground, through his uh, heels, to his knees, his hips, all the way through his shoulder to his, uh, his elbow, and then it all generated with power. And it's very much similar to that. So as I'm rotating, but right now, as I'm doing my abanico, when I want to add power, I can. Can every once in a while I add the hip into there? Absolutely. If I want to add more hip, then I can add that extra hip to generate that power, okay? So let me turn somewhere so you can see me. So if I want to add more hip, I can do that. But I don't need to do it as much. If I want to do it multiple times, then adding my hip back and forward, back and forward can become very tiresome. So minimize that. And you have to remember, you're not staying on abanico in combat. You're flowing. You're going to flow. From technique to technique. You're gonna do diagonals. 
right? You're going to flow to different techniques. That is the whole point of why we do all these movements. And to my diagonal ticks, my abanico, my outside lascos, my inside lascos, okay? So we'll be moving and doing all these techniques to apply the flow and not stick on just one technique. So let me go over that one more time. So when I'm doing my abanico, I get a 90 degree angle bend and my stick is parallel to the floor. I'm not rotating my whole body because that's a waste of movement. I keep it simple and very direct, which makes it effective. This hand, all the live hand, or also known as the checking hand, every time my elbow comes in, I check it to stop the over movement of my arm, which then creates a flick in my wrist so that my wrist does that. Okay, it flicks, it flicks. And it also then helps to recoil for when I want to go back, okay? Compared to if I don't use my checking hand, then I have the potential for my whole arm to go across my body, wasting movement again. Whereas this stops that movement and allows it to flick and be more effective, okay? So I'll apply it one more time and give you an idea of how it works on the bag. So I get to my stance, 90 degree angle, and I just let it go nice and relaxed. I try to keep my shoulder relaxed. I check my elbow, make sure that's supporting. And then I slowly pick it up. And I can move around. Now it's a little tight here, but I can still move to keep that drill going. Using the tip and time. And there you have it, abanico, fan. I keep the stick parallel to the floor, just above my head, 90 degree angle bend in my arm, low stance, and I check every time it goes around from side to side. I'm Hubert Border. If you like this lesson, please hit subscribe, give me a thumbs up, click on your bell so every time I post a new video, you get the notification, and I will see you on the next one.